Welcome into the Super Bowl podcast. My name is David Arnold, and you may be wondering why am I doing the intro today. But here's Harper Houck, the main man himself. And today, we are so excited. In all reality, Braden Dorman, the usual host of the show, going to be his testimony today. And um, we're just so excited to know him as a brother and to be able to hear him explain what God's doing in his life. Dorman, man, we're excited for this, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of feelings that come along with this. Um, just knowing like how I felt at the beginning and the end of your guys' yeah. um, gives me a lot of peace just to know that ultimately we're just talking about our lives and that, that that's not a tough thing to do. It's just, you know, there's also added pressures. Like, am I saying the right things? Am I going to cover everything I want to cover? Um, yeah, there's anxiety there, just to be completely honest uh, at the beginning of the story. But, um, you know, I'm ready to go. And uh, I... I will tell you another thing, just to be completely transparent before I start, is I, the enemies hit me with feelings of like, your testimony is not as, you know, it's not as going to be, not going to be as impactful as maybe a Harper's or a David's or, you know, a, a pastor's that you see online. Um, but there has been also incredible peace from the Lord since then that um, that doesn't matter and that, you know, whatever I cover, it's going to like different parts of my life are going to, you know, That's right. impact different people who yeah. are you know, maybe in that walk right now. Um, so I'm just going to talk about my story. God's written all over it, and uh, mm. yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah. And that's all you can do for all you viewers out there. God gave us the upbringing and the experiences for a reason. That's all we can speak on. That's all we know. And so going back to what you're saying, like the enemy plants those seeds of doubt. Oh, my, my testimony isn't as special, isn't as, you know, big and bad as some others, you know, like that, that's a complete lie. Because at the end of the day, these testimonies, yeah, they can absolutely be impactful and, and meaningful. But all they're doing is pointing back to to God, right? They're all pointing to Him, not towards us. And so, brother, I I appreciate you going off and just saying that right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. like just being completely honest with us and with everyone watching this. That you can only speak for you, and that you you recognize that the enemy has hit you with doubt already up to this point. Yeah. And what's cool about that too is notice where it comes from, the enemy. Yeah. And what does the enemy hate the most? Probably testimonies, right? Yep. So there's power in it, brother, just by you experiencing that. Like, that should show the enemy doesn't want this to happen. And guess what? It is. So, yeah. man, we're excited. And uh, I'll go ahead and just kind of give you the floor, man. Like, we're here and we're going to be, you know, interacting in some parts because I know our testimonies do kind of intertwine together. But Braden Dorman, let's get it, man. Yeah. Um, to preface my testimony, I guess, I, I'm – not going to be too scripted here. There's just some points I wanted to cover, but the part that I do want to just is kind of scripted out here. Like you can just tell. So I'm just gonna be honest. Yeah. Um, I want to start my testimony by stating how lucky I am, how understanding of that I am and how un- I understand that by God giving me the opportunities he has, I-, I need to take advantage of it. Like I understand how lucky I am. I understand not everybody you know, has had it as good as I have. And that probably is part of the reason why I feel like my testimony might not be as like, there hasn't been a whole lot of traumatic experiences I've had to go through, but there's different things that I know are going to relate to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I also want to start by saying, thank you, Lord, for everything you did. Like, man, not only everything you did, but what he is doing right now, what he will do. And I want to just state that everything I say here, I wouldn't change it for the world. I I think that's like something I have to say at the beginning. Um, Like there were some crazy experiences that we're going to touch on and that we got to experience together. Sure. And in, in moments of pain and in moments of like, why did that happen? Like I now is, have the peace to look back and on and be like, man, I would not change that. Like, I know this is where I'm supposed to be. Mm. And that's just kind of trusting that the Lord's got that. Um, so yeah, um, I guess to start off, um, you know, I met you guys in 13th grade, right? I met you in nice. freshman year of, uh, of college. So, so there were 18 years of my life where I didn't know you guys. Um, and you know, we've talked about it before, but for you guys and the viewers, um, I grew up in a Christian family. Um, my parents, <laughs> I'm just so lucky with, with my parents, man. Like they, they both did not have it easy growing up. They didn't, uh, the Lord wasn't necessarily a central part of their lives. And they, he kind of just grabbed them and, and he, and you know, they held on to him tightly and he probably wasn't even a huge part of the relationship when they came together. But he uh, made it evident that they that they needed him to be the center of their lives, and they have really turned 
like the page and the script on um, how our family is going to look moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and man, like they've just taught me so much, and like they've just shown me how to to live my life out like a Christian. But ultimately, it's my walk, and I can't live my my parents. Uh, faith out like it's it's got to be mine um mm -hmm. so i would say early in my life I, I was i was doing it because my parents wanted me to because my parents told me to and it, it felt good and it was something i had a desire to do but um not until later on would i end up walking that out um i was baptized in second grade or third grade um which is pretty crazy i just time and time again in church Growing up in the church, I would see baptisms happening fairly often. We we didn't grow up in a Baptist church where it was happening every week, so it was kind of more of like a, hey, in like two months we're we're getting baptized, sure. so let yeah. us know if you want to be a part of that. And uh, I probably didn't understand exactly what I was getting myself into, but what I did know is that when I got out of that water, even in third grade, I knew I had to live up to a certain expectations, and I had to you know, make it clear that I was baptized in each interaction that I had in the future. And I would mess up and mess up and mess up. Of course, as we all do, we're all in human, all imperfect, but, um, that, that baptism was significant for me and it did set the tone for me. Um, and kind of moving along, like that was how I was known. I was, I was known as the good kid. Um, you know, in grade school, even in going into high school, I was known as like, probably a, a kind dude you know the guy that didn't cuss the one that made the right decisions the one you wouldn't necessarily um mm -hmm. talk about sketchy things with you know if you're going out and doing things you're not not supposed to be doing i probably didn't hear about it um even if they were friends of mine that were doing things not that they didn't trust me it just like probably i probably would lead to feelings of guilt because i wasn't doing those things um so that's just kind of how things like worked out in high school and um you know i'm thankful for it ultimately like i remember thinking my parents were strict and they were honestly they were strict um uh, but man like i'm gonna be strict like i'm gonna be i'm gonna be certainly gonna be strict <laughs> and like i now can look back on that and just be th super thankful for that strict um parenting for my parents um because it did just allow me to set the tone and and understand what I needed to do, even when I didn't quite understand what my life was going to amount to, and I still don't, like just being a good person and just, and that just, you know, that involved rules and yeah. um, seeing friends or other people in my grades not have those rules was annoying to me at times growing up. Um, but ultimately, like I'm seeing the fruits of it now. I saw the fruits of it then, and um, I'm just thankful that. I did have the strict parents, yeah. even though I may not have had the worldly fun that I could have. Um, I think that would have led to, to tough times. I, I think it always does, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, before you go even further, shout out Mama and Papa Dorman yeah. for raising a fine young man, a dapper young man. Uh, dapper. But all, all jokes aside, I think it's awesome that you recognize that faith isn't passed down generation to generation. You know, it's one of your own. Like, you, it has to be your own right and so the fact that you you recognize that even though you grew up in a christian household and we could say you were held to a higher standard you held yourself to a higher standard your parents held you to a higher standing like that is part of your story you know yeah and it led you to the point where you are now mm -hmm. and i just i think that's awesome yeah and we're all so so blessed all three of us grew up in christian households so that's where we yeah. kind of can relate without even sure. you know necessarily knowing each other uh, like it There's that's at a least huge a, a foundation right? absolutely that foundation that just like you, you want to make your parents proud, you know, you, you want to do the right things for them, even if you don't want to. And obviously that was for protection of us yeah. looking back on, which is really cool. Yeah. I mean, thinking about it, like I totally have the foundation. Like I, I knew the Bible stories. Um, and now just like recently I'm like, Oh, that's, that story's in the end of Genesis. That story's in first Samuel. Like mm -hmm. mm. it's crazy that, you know, I may have known the stories and I'd heard them and I could tell them, what why like what was the why behind it um that it just shows me how clearly I, that i was and i was certainly a lukewarm christian and that's i, I think it comes with maturity I, I think it's very it is pretty rare for a a full-blown you know younger kid to be like fully like 
in relation with the Lord. Totally. Um, I think it's common for them to be living out their parents' faith. And I, I don't think that's a horrible thing. Like I, I'm thankful that I had that foundation ultimately. Um, and I, I, I talked it too. Like, that's the thing that, you know, I, I'm sad about sometimes is that I, I talked the talk, but I didn't, I did not walk what I was talking. <laughs> um, walk the walk. Like, I didn't walk the walk. Yeah. Um, I think to high school and kind of moving forward, like I was a part of leadership in FCA fellowship of Christian athletes. Um, I was at a small school and like, I got the privilege of playing and being like, you know, a leader on a lot of sports teams there because there weren't many kids. Uh, so shout out small schools out there. But, um, so I was popular in, in my high school and I, I, I took advantage of it. I think I, I, I brought people to FCA. I, I spoke, I spoke to them. Um, but realistically I wasn't going home and I wasn't walking out what, um, you know, I, I may have believed or had said to people and I can see that clearly now. And that's, that's okay. I, I think that that shows me the transformation when now that I can look back on it, I can be like, okay, this is what it feels like. I can have certainty that the Lord is with me now because it is so different now. Um, which is cool. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's a couple of verses that I'll, I'll touch on throughout my testimony, but I think the, the very cliche one that I had was Philippians 4.13. Yeah, I can do yeah. all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what I did hold on to in my lukewarm state. Um, and I don't know if it was, you know, I don't think it was cocky, but it was like, man, like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I, and I, I believed that. Um, were we talking about it, you know, through prayer each and every day? No, like Lord and I weren't like at that level. But um, I at least proclaimed that and I at least um, – believed it in my heart and and i i can now say man i can i can do all things mm. through christ who sanctions me which is cool um so yeah kind of going back to fca that kind of came about later in high school and um i did looking back on it now i i think that's where i learned that i do love pouring into others um that's something that is so easy to do now that god's at the center of my life but um I think I kind of learned the passion that I had for it, the desire I had for it. And now it's so much more fruitful when you have stuff that you like from your life, from a, a testimony to tell, um, that you can say, Hey, I've been there and like, mm -hmm. let's, let's do this together. And man, like there's, there's not many better aspects of, of the Christian walk than walking with others in community. And that's one of the things I've most enjoyed with you guys for sure. So, um, yeah, I mean that's what life looked like in high school. Um, it's it's crazy, man. Like, I I had some incredible friends in high school, and I I wish that we had gotten to talk about God more. I I do because they knew that I believed in. They knew I went to church, but with my close friends, especially, I feel like I could have done a better job. And I I know they've they've been able to tell the difference since college has begun. And I'll go back home at times. Um, but I, I wish that we could have built our foundation on that. And, um, you know, I, I just trust that the Lord's going to get to each and every one of them at the time that they're supposed to. It's mm. not going to be up to me. Um, sure. it's, it's going to be up to them and the Lord. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And ultimately I, I hope, and I also know that I did plant the seeds and that eventually that'll happen. Um, but yeah, I, I guess just looking back at high school and grade school as a whole, it's like, there's some regret there, but it's also, I'm not like going to be too hard on myself because I, I understand like I'm a kid and like, mm -hmm. um, in a world that is just becoming more and more worldly day after day. So yeah. I, I, that's, a, that's so cool. Cause like you, you were planting seeds to other people and God was planting seeds in you. Yeah. I feel like through that time of your life, like you, you know, you, you were going to these things. You're still going to FCA and hearing the word. And that was still doing something inside of you, you know, and like God was working and working on you and allowing you to go into your future. You know, like that's so cool to have that as part of your story, right? You're getting poured into and then you're, you're bringing, you know, showing other people like, Hey, this is interesting. Like, like, let's go to this. And, you know, maybe weren't living it out fully, but at that age, not many people are right. Yeah. It's just a totally like, it's a curious state, right? Yeah. In high school, like we're all curious what, 
Mm. What's going to fulfill us? What's going to, you know, bring us glory? What's going to do this? What's going to do that? Like we're all looking and searching for that thing, you know, that's going to fill any void or, or anything, right? And it seems to me like you were going to the right places for a lot of it, you know, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. and I think I think that's super relatable. Like, Absolutely. I think, I mean, everyone's story is a little different, right? Some people, I very do I very do much believe that it happens for them in grade school, right? Yeah. Some people later on in life, right? Like, mm-hmm. but the important thing is, like, we can't go back and change our past. Like, we we're the accumulation of everything that's happened in our past. Like it all happens for a reason. Like you spoke that those words into me a few days ago, you know, like it all happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I think also like there gets, like you have to have experienced life enough in order for things like for dots to be connected. Like some things you just, you need to experience. You need to go through some hard times and some brokenness before you really appreciate and trust the Lord. And you have your eyes open and that the blindness removed. And so like, I don't know. I, I I love going off of what you're saying, but like, dude, you your accumulation of everything that's happened, you know. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I think, like, really, when again, I'm so lucky that I was in uh, a household that at least brought these discussions up. Um, but I was able to rely on others in high school and grade school, um, and then when you come to college, like, you are relying on yourself a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, the gap is like is widened a bit, and you're like, "Well, I do need somebody here. My parents aren't physically here. Uh, Lord, <laughs> you there? Like, maybe like I probably didn't feel like I needed him as much because I felt like I already had that security and just um, I don't know. God just teaches you different things, man, and it's it, it's it's cool to just look at, back on and and talk about. Um, and it's it's crazy, like coming to gcu in general um i i wanted to go to the the, i wanted to be a sports broadcaster that was my dream uh and i wanted to go to a school that had a great college football basketball and baseball team i was like what d1 team out there because you know i I played my sports i enjoyed them um that's why i still talk about them to this day i still love it Mm -hmm. um i was like how can i work in sports like that's that's gonna be my goal if i'm not gonna be able to do it myself um so I was looking in that direction and it's crazy, man. Like I, I took a tour at, at ASU, Arizona state and it was awesome. Like it was a really cool tour. Um, we went to the Walter Cronkite school of, uh, mass journalism and broadcasting, I think is what it's wow. something like that. And it's like, like, it's like nuts. It was a crazy tour. We were all like pretty convinced at that point that I was mm-hmm. going there after that. Mm-hmm. Um, move it back a little bit further my mom's always saying oh the newsboys are at grand canyon oh toby mack was at grand canyon you should <laughs> go to grand canyon my whole entire life really she's telling me this oh. and i just like nah i ain't going to grand canyon there's yeah. no way i'm going there like they no don't way. they don't even have sports <laughs> as far as i'm concerned right like yeah, sure you know that's me growing up yeah and then my mom said let's uh let's tour grand canyon too while we're down here so we check it out and it's a really awesome campus right it's it's really amazing i couldn't have said a bad thing about the tour but at that point i'm like still pretty convinced you know asu is gonna be where i go um and it's crazy too like my sisters were probably verbally committed to grand canyon before i was and like one of them still a junior in high school <laughs> like after that tour like my little sister landry who's now here i mean she was like i'm going there like that's gonna happen and i'm like still not convinced that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Our, our cousin, uh, Ellie was here. So we got to visit her. Um, and then Audrey, my, 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 uh, youngest sister, she's still a junior in high school right now. And she was like, I'm going there too. So like those two, like actually they wanted to come here before I did. And it's just crazy that I ended up here, man. Like I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Um, mm. I, I know the Lord was going to reach me either way, but like, man, he reached me through people here and then he just grabbed me and said, let's have a relationship ourselves. And I just don't know. Like it was, it's so clear. I was meant to come here, man. Like it's just so darn clear. And it's, it is just crazy that I was, that I ended up here. Um, my, my mom just, you know, kept pushing into me. And I don't know if, I don't know. Like we haven't really talked about it recently, but like, I don't know if it was like just like a hopeful, 
just gesture of saying that out loud or if, if she like truly always thought I should or could end up here. But there was an incredible faith there now looking back on it. And I'm sure my dad was the same way, but I just, I do distinctly remember my mom just always saying that. Um, and, you know, COVID hadn't quite hit yet, but we're looking at the financials. There's going to be like way more money to go to ASU mm. than yep. GCU. I do a discover trip. I fall more in love with the campus. Mm-hmm. Um, and somehow, man, it's just like, it just clicked one day that I'm coming here and I end up doing that. And COVID hits a lot of places are shut down and just like it's crazy that Grand Canyon is like one of the few places in the country that gets to actually have in-person college yeah um and that's kind of where we meet up yeah it's like our looking back just already like our four years are probably the most complete out of anybody in the country like in college yeah like isn't that crazy yeah like yeah because I mean we we were we were hybrid is how we were, were doing school so we were still going in class you know in person we got delayed like a month coming in, but yeah, it's interesting because I'd never heard of Grand Canyon until Harper, you, you went out here for the, the, you know, your trip as far as sports, like your swim, you know, and we had a, a you know, a conversation and this is where it was really cool for us. Cause Harper was my best friend, you know, growing up and like when he was, we never gone to school together and he was like, dude, like there's these two schools I'm considering and I'll let you like take it over, but like sure. it was Seton Hall and GCU. And you started explaining to me the differences, the pros and the cons. And I'm like, this GCU sound, this GCU place sounds pretty awesome. And, uh, is there room for one more? You know, it was kind of the oh, way yeah. you were explaining it. So and I, I think like a word I would use to describe is infectious. Like absolutely that, that yeah. atmosphere that I don't know, you could just see that the school was growing and even like, even in the midst of COVID, like, I yes. feel like we all see, we all could see that like the school was still going to be able to grow. Like the sports were growing. They're making a name for themselves, like online platform, like just growing. And like, I think we all wanted to be a part of that. And I'm glad like none of us look back on our decision. Like we all made a no. decision and yeah. I don't regret a thing. No, I don't regret a thing. And I'm so thankful. Um, Dorman, how about you tell them where we all met up? You remember the exact day? When we, when we, I guess when the friendship really started. Oh yeah, yeah. A, a memorable oh, yeah. day to say to say the least. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. And before I get to that, I, sure. I do just want to say it because I kind of thought of it. Like, I don't know if I would have come here if it hadn't been because of the Christian aspect. As like, as much as I was not a firm believer in the Lord, like that foundation that was built when I was younger still had an effect on me. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I can. I can really get into this Christian thing too now that I'm here. Like that's just an added bonus. That Absolutely. was kind of the way I looked at it. Hundred um, percent. And uh, let's just say it's been more than a bonus. Uh, yeah. It's been everything. Right. Um, Life itself, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Every, yep. Everything. So, um, yeah. Getting back to when we, our first real time to like became friends, man. Like, um, I, it was a pretty courageous thing for me to like, I could have stayed in state with friends, you know, and I, I came down here, there were uh, a couple girls from my grade that I was friends with that were, we were all coming down here, but there were no, no other guys that I knew here wow. like, on campus at all. So I, that was a very anxious like time for me, especially like the first week. Um, I remember watching or walking away from my parents outside of the arena for the last time like bye like not gonna see you again for a little bit and like that was crazy i was like Mm -hmm. i was almost in tears honestly i don't think i've ever told them that but like i was walking away had to walk all the way back to the grove shout out gcu fans (laughs) Um, and like it was just a full walk and it was just like me realizing i'm on my own um and then next it was like, man, can I, can I find some friends? And, um, before we get to the part where we get, where I meet, like it's pretty early on and, uh, freshmen here at Grand Canyon, a lot of them meet up outside of uh, what this, what is called the Grove where there's four freshman dorms. And then there's these, these two big fields and got a pool. Uh, yeah. yeah. And cool. in welcome yep. week, it's pretty common for freshmen to just go down there and meet people. And like, I, I know for a fact, a lot of people have met their friends that are they're still friends with that week mm-hmm. um but for me it was like i didn't really know my roommates too well uh of course i was going to be friends with them and i'd have time to talk to them but i still like you know i i wanted to go talk to other people um and i remember a couple days in i was just like 
I prayed to the Lord and I remember going down the elevator saying, Lord, like, please, please present me a friend right now. Like, please present me like friends in general. Um, and I went right down there and like some, some other guys got in the elevator with me right after Mm -hmm. we start talking and I spent like a week with them. And while I may not be as close with them right now, or like, we're still like mutual friends. Like it led me to other people and I ended up meeting a lot of people just getting more comfortable having conversations and it just got easier to reach out to people. And I couldn't believe the instant answer from the Lord. Like I was like tired. Like I was like, man, like, I don't know if I'm going to find people here. Like Mm -hmm. my roommates seem cool and all like a couple of them already had some friends. They were out with them. And of course you guys know Sean in the street. (laughs) Sean was my roommate randomly freshman year. So Awesome. And Sean and I didn't honestly probably didn't click immediately. Like we, we had different like, um, things that we enjoyed doing and like, um, but we were in the same room. So ultimately like that, that relationship grew really quickly. But, um, that first week it was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be friends with this dude. Like I just don't. (laughs) And I'm sure he felt the same way. Um, but it was cool to see God just answer that call immediately. And that's kind of the first time I remember that happening in college. Um, yeah, like I get in the elevator, guys get in right after me, and we're we're friends. And like, and it just felt like, all right, I can be comfortable. I don't have to worry about this anymore. Um, then a couple weeks later, the guys across the hallway, um, David, me. yeah, and me and my boys, yeah, the Anthony, Braden, they work behind the scenes here today. Just to you know, it's still just to all great friends. Yeah, to this I'm day. still my roommates, by the way. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. They. Uh, you know, I could hear them always making a ruckus out of N- <laughs> N- NFL really? Sundays. Could you oh really? yeah, yeah. I could hear you guys cheering, and I d- didn't have a TV, and I was just that like Sundays. I was just watching uh, football on my phone. You know, it was important to me. I was I had to watch my Seahawks. <sighs> yep. Um, yeah. I think it was like week four or five. So yeah, I, think I mean, it was, like it was October. Yes, yeah, so I mean, point in October. It was like a solid month into the year, yeah. actually. Now that I think, well, no, we started late, which is what happened. Yeah, we started in right. the middle of September, so it's probably like two or three weeks into the yeah. school year. And uh, I just knocked on your door. Like, do, do you remember? Because I don't know if the door was like open or if it was not. I don't know what. I happened. think the door might have been open, yeah. and I just like knocked and but, like just said, "Hey, guys!" And <laughs> I'm sitting in the common area. He walks in. And he's like. Hey, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what's up, man? Like, he's like, you got a TV there. Yeah, it was, it was just so awesome. I will, but, uh, yeah. I'm gonna verify this because I, I remember it a little more vividly than yeah. you do. My roommate and I, who he didn't live in the same building as them, we had been over and we had brought food, and me and my roommate Alec were sitting with Dave and his Is roommates. This the same? Yeah, we were all on the couch just eating, watching the Seahawks versus Cardinals game, and there's this open seat, and Dorman just walks in. Pretty much sits down, and we're all just like, yeah. all right. You, you know what happened? was That was earlier that day. You are like, hey, can I watch the Seahawks game tonight? Because it was, it was Sunday night or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, shoot, yeah. I mean, we got space, so, yeah. And then. And he just walks in. I remember me and Alec, who hadn't been there before and yeah. even met Dorman. We both yeah. looked at each other like, who's this guy who just came in with I think you had a sandwich or something, too. Yeah. Just sat down, started eating, watched the game. We're like, all right, well. And, and all, all transparency. Uh, there was an iconic sports bet that was <laughs> that was going here. I had put like five dollars on like a parlay, right? And it came down to the Seahawks and Cardinals that night. And any sports fans will know that, you know, it didn't turn out well. But anyway, um, but basically, <laughs> we were all like amped up because we we're like, this could be like five to two hundred. Like this could be, you know, like just being. And you guys, right? the Seahawks was the last. Leg. Seahawks was the last leg. I just needed the Seahawks to win. I think is all it was. And so Brayden walks in. At so, I, I think the game had already started at that point or something. But you walk in, and I remember you dropped like one of your infamous Brayden stats. You're like, you know, the Seahawks haven't lost when when leading at halftime by three or more points or something. It was like <laughs> it was some crazy stat, and I'm like, bro, I I am with that. Let's go, like you know. But I just yeah, I remember you sitting right next to me, and we were just like, I'm just like, he's like, what do you got? And I'm like, I need the Seahawks to win. And we're like, all right, let's go. Yeah, yeah it was it was awesome. And the game, like, went, went to, like, overtime. overtime. Yep. It was crazy. DK scored a touchdown. They called it back. Yeah. DK oh, caught Buda Baker on that yeah, the interception tackle at the them. one. Yeah. It was just this wild game that the Cardinals <laughs> ended up winning. Yeah. But it just, like, 
got us all comfortable with one another and just brought us together that night. And, um, man, I don't remember looking back. You know? I mean, no. w- when I tell you we were on the edge of our seats, like that's, that's the best way to yeah. describe it. Like, we were all so in tune with the game and there's just, there's just like a level of brotherhood that yeah, it just sports happened. brings together. And that's yeah. really the start of our, our group friendship. That's, that's really how it started. A simple sports bet and, you know, yeah. some, some bravery coming over and just sitting down like, that's as simple yeah. as that. It's the greatest sports bet I've ever made, even though we lost. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, man. But, oh, but no, it, it was, it was crazy how that, that all, you know, worked out. Just Yeah. Because, I mean, who knows if we'd even be watching the game at that point, like if that hadn't been, you know. But sure. Yeah. Just, just crazy how it all worked out and that you had asked the, you know, earlier that day, like, hey, can I come in and watch the game? Mm-hmm. And that the fact that you didn't have a TV in your own room, like you, th- you start thinking of this stuff and it's like, man, what, what were the chances of that happening? With yeah. everybody there, and man, it was it was a god thing for sure. That was awesome. Yeah. Um. So we became friends, and we had quite the year. And this is the year that really led us all to Christ. Um. And it wouldn't be until after this, the year ended, mm-hmm. leading into that summer and then so our, our sophomore year. But freshman year, man, like we found each other, and then we said, like, let's just take over the world. <laughs> And, um, That's we, were, <laughs> we were, we were idiots. Um, we made decisions for ourselves. We, mm. oh, I guess I should speak for myself, but oh, I, there. I had a lot of fun. I experienced things I'd never experienced before. I didn't have to ask, you know, for permission for, permission yeah. for anything. I didn't have to tell people what I was doing. And I, you know, I made a lot of decisions that, I would never make at this point in my life. Um, and it's just, it's crazy how God was put on the back burners and like what, while I may have come to Grand Canyon with the expectation that I was going to grow in my faith, that was completely set aside. Um, I went to church like once or twice my freshman year. That's just, that's just mind boggling to me. Like, and I, I remember probably feeling guilty every once in a while and like, I I remember using the excuse, I don't have a car, so I can't go to Mm -hmm. church. I could have watched it online. I never did. Like, it was like very minimal that I made it to church. Um, And the week, I mean, Saturday nights were to party, man. Yeah. It it was. And it was just so opposite of the life that I lived at home. And, um, like, honestly, looking back, like, the strict um, parenting I had received – like it was a complete 180 to what I experienced there. Um, so I don't know, like that's going to be something I'm going to have to like balance somewhat. Um, just like be explaining like to my kids that there is a complete, there could be that complete 180 and things can go haywire. And like, I, I'm just excited that I'm going to have this story to tell my my kids because I know what life can look like when I just put it on my shoulders. Um, so yeah, I mean, made bad decisions, got in trouble, like in full transparency, like with the school, like, um, and my parents weren't happy, man, not at all. And I, you know, I think they, each parent can probably expect things like these will happen in college. Um, but I don't think my parents saw it coming from me. It's just the way I had acted through high school. They were, I'm sure they were caught off guard and then more than anything disappointed and then like scared, like. I mean, like we're you're you're getting in trouble. Like, what's that going to do to your future? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, all I could do is reassure them. Like, it's not going to happen again. Like, I'm going to be smart in the future. Um, and like, I almost had I got to the point where I had to be. I had to be smart. And it's crazy that that summer, like, I was upset with with people that had gotten me in trouble. I was upset with maybe the Lord that you know things hadn't gone my way and mm-hmm. that um i had three more years to you know pick things up yeah and, and in in hindsight like really as soon as you guys got back from college we kind of understood man that that all happened for a reason last year um and yeah. you know going back to your guys's testimonies i'm sure people remember like david um you like the lord touched you in a significant way that summer and like mm-hmm. snapped you into into like his life and uh that led to harper and then like full transparency man like i picked up harper at the beginning of sophomore year 
with Braden, and we took him out to Carson's house. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. We picked you up for mm-hmm. sophomore year. Sure do. And you spent that 45-minute drive talking about the Lord the entire time, and that wasn't the foundation of our relationship at all. And so from there, like, it's crazy how quickly – you excited like you got me excited about it because I was like, wait, this is stuff I've heard before. This is stuff I've done before, and now my friends want to do this. Like, I was like getting amped up about it, but also I was caught off guard because mm-hmm. we had built our first year of knowing each other off of having fun, being stupid, yeah, and um, just worrying about ourselves. And I mean, you basically gave your testimony for, of the summer to us, and I know it impacted both of us. And then you told you gave us a glimpse into what David was gonna tell us as well. You didn't want to tell his story. You respected that. And then David shows up and he tells his side of things, and it's like, man, like I'm in. I remember th- thinking I'm in, and I also remember thinking, wait, wasn't I already in? The, like, what? Why am I? Right. Like, you know, there was a lot of guilt there. Like, it was like, shoot, I just needed to open my eyes, and luckily I had these two two guys to do that for me. Um, so pretty early on, we we decided we're gonna have a Bible study, mm-hmm. um, and that's where I was thankful, man. Like I could do my part because I felt I felt less. I I like I honestly like, I felt lesser, just because I I should have had that foundation and I, I should have had the feelings you guys had and I didn't and I like I should have with the walk that I had walked, um, but. I knew how to get into the Bible. You guys, you guys were like, I don't know how to get, I don't know what to do. Like, what do we read? Like, yeah. where do we start? And I, it was just, I was like, okay, I do know how to do that. Like, yeah. absolutely. So cool. How that um, works out. So like the works were there. It's just like, then God can start chiseling away. So like, yeah. man, like that's when the Bible study started. Um, start of our sophomore year, <laughs> just a group of goons that had probably on like a Friday or Saturday night, instead of, the year before where we, we would be drinking, like we got in the word. We said, all right, let's get into, do we, do we read Mark? Yeah, we did Mark first. Hebrews yeah. was there early too. Hebrews. Yeah. We went James and church. We yep. started reading yeah. James. Yep. yeah. James. Right when we got back. Yeah. It was James. Yeah. We found a church that was new too. Yeah. We we're like, totally. Uh, yeah, I think cause Harper and I were just so shocked. We're like, how do, how do we, how do, what do we do? Like, like, how do we do this? Like uh, I'm ready to go, you know? And then Braden had like the sense of like I've done this before. Like here, like let's let's start in Mark. And we're like, yeah, that's great. Like let's do it. You know, it was perfect how we all yeah. three had different like, yeah. you know, energy levels, perspectives, and like mm-hmm. had we had enough to start, and that's been carried forward ever since. But yeah, got found a church. I remember. I think was it you who brought up North Phoenix? Yeah, I had been there once. Yeah, the, our freshman year. Okay. Like, yeah. That's all I really had it to base on. <laughs> like, and maybe honestly. collective too. And, you, you had a collective. Yeah. Yeah, did maybe, we, maybe we I, I gone, didn't. I didn't. I might have gone I think once or twice freshman year as well. Yeah, because so. I think that's maybe how I you. Thought you had so that was really just because I was familiar with it. And I knew right. it was close. Yeah. Probably the reason why I said it. Yeah. Um, and we've been there since. Yeah. It was just cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was just crazy how quickly God got us just fired up about who He was. Mm-hmm. Um, and like we took it chapter by chapter, man. And like we got deep. Like we. We were like, we sat like in his word and we sat in his presence and like we truly took each word and said like, what's he telling us here? Yeah. Um, I think that was about as intentional as our Bible studies ever got. Um, mm-hmm. Like there, we we had patience like, and we just wanted to learn. And like, I I envy that a little bit. Like, like I miss that. I'm sure each Christian can like relate with this. Is like, man, like, I remember like being that born again Christian that's like, like just fired up to get in the word because it's not easy to do that every day. Yeah. Nope. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, you guys can speak to this too, but like sure. that, that started to go throughout the first semester. Um, we made good decisions that semester, praise God. Yeah. Um, and then December was huge for me as well. We did, um, Luke, we did Luke. In, yep. In mm-hmm. 24, 24 chapters, chapters 24 days. And then it's Christmas day. Yeah. We were, I was like, that's cool. I I had read that something or saw an Instagram post like, hey, you, you guys should just if you're looking for something to do, you some some reading, you know, to remind you of what Christmas is about. Like, let's do Luke. Luke yeah, twenty four chapters, twenty four days, and it started out with just me and Harper. Out, we were like, let's do this, you know. And then like, 
you joined very quickly, I think right away, basically. And then next thing you know, we got like 10 people. Yeah, almost 15 looped. some days. Yeah. yeah. And we were every day. Like yeah, we, every day. Every single day of meet up in person. Met up. Yeah. And that was so fruitful. And like the conversation we had, it, it started to plant the seed of having a podcast eventually to yeah. where we're like, man, people have to hear what God's putting on our hearts right now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that's what I wanted to touch on. Like, yeah, like you could see, you could see the transformation from freshman year to sophomore year that, that it was like day and night, like completely different <laughs> motives, completely different heart postures. Like what we were doing as a group was like completely unfamiliar, but we were doing it together. We were walking together and the more momentum that we started to build in these Bible studies, the more people we got coming to them. Like yeah. we could just see the power, like starting to starting to snowball, right? And then that's when we started having conversations like, okay, like how do we take what we've experienced here and reach a bigger audience? You know, like how, how do we do that? Yeah. You know, and that started, like you said, planting the seeds for the podcast and then more prayer, more thought went into it. And then, yeah, I remember uh, Cole Daniels. Yeah, um, shout my out buddy, Cole, man. My That's my neighbor awesome. from back home, a guy that he also was probably very similar to me in high school. Just like like Christ was important to us. Did we act it out as much as we wanted to, or probably not? But like we were both there. He ended up coming to Grand Canyon a year later, um, and he's like, "You guys you know, you should do a podcast. Like <laughs> this stuff is awesome. Like, like yeah. and it's crazy how that just little seed planted." Um, yeah, shout out Cole, but um, so awesome. Yeah, like it's crazy, like that the same room of people that may have been partying on a Friday night freshman year was the same group of people that was reading Luke twenty four days in a row, in just a year later. Like it was, it's not like some a couple guys just came in and said we're I'm, we're blowing this up. We're right. like, we're going for the Lord. Like the Lord said nah like you guys can do this like let's do this and like i broke you guys down and in different ways and you guys can hear their stories and their episodes as well he broke us all down in different ways and he he made us realize man like what were we doing our freshman year like and and beyond that like what were we doing our whole lives like now that we can see what life is like with you lord like Mm. man we missed out um but it's also provides a lot of hope and i think that that hope really just burnt like a, like a fire man it just spread and like, we're like let's what how many people can we touch right now um so that that was cool yeah that excitement was infectious i like it's it's still like you feel the emotions of that oh, time yeah. oh yeah cuz it was just like nothing else mattered nothing else mattered we were in school we were doing this stuff but like it was just, how can we serve God? How can we serve God? How can we get in the word? How can we grow? Like, mm. we were just infants in the faith of like, <laughs> I haven't read like two chapters of the Bible. I don't get to hold, read the whole thing. Like, like, it was just, yeah. and to be able to do it together with people, like, and like you said, it wasn't just one person who came in. Like, it was, everyone was willing and ready and it was like someone just had to say it or someone had to get, you know, like bring it up and, and the Lord had to touch one of us. And it was just like whole place is on fire in the best way possible. And it was like, man, those moments I will literally cherish into eternity. Like, yeah, I, I will never forget coming back to school and like just seeing the impact and the change in everyone and like how we're ready to, to live now. Like we're ready to go be men of God. And like, we just didn't have that desire freshman year and we, you know, we put it off. We did, you know, whatever. And, and that, that I think is such an amazing story of like the people who see us on the outside, like, like freshman year, they saw us and they're like, what happened to you? <laughs> like you were this way and now you're this way. And it's like, now we have a whole college to witness to. Yeah. Like, it, it's just so clear how, how God was working through all that, throughout all that. And like. Those moments, I think all of us like just hold on to so closely because it it was everything to us to mm. be able to walk together and to be able to not just be friends but brothers in the faith. Like that still is everything to us. That's why we're still doing this. Like it's it's amazing. Yeah, I will say like um, I'm trying to remember what the term is, but it's like oh like the honeymoon stage. Like yeah, mm. we went like I will say 
because that happened a couple of years ago, like mm-hmm. there is more to the story for me. Like, yeah. um, there was that honeymoon stage of like, man, just on fire for the Lord. And it's like, that does like start to, the flames start to get a little smaller, right? Like, mm-hmm. ulti- like and I, I don't know, maybe that's not the case for everybody. I think, but there's waves. Like I think life we, happens, that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And for me, I think a battle that I faced and still will face at times is that um, I lived a life before the Lord that I felt like I was a believer. So I was, I was a believer and then I became a believer. And that, that, um, that switch for me isn't always easy. And it's some, it's easy for me to fall into right back into because Mm. the difference isn't like too crazy. It's, it's just like, I'm still walk, like I'm still talking about the same things, but like, I'm just living my life completely different. Um, so it's been easy for me, like to be transparent. And I'm sure people can relate to it a bit that it's easy for me to fall back into habits that I would have, you know, when I was in that lukewarm state, because in that lukewarm state, I didn't realize I was, I was in the lukewarm state. Yeah, totally. Um, so that I, I would say that's what I've been, that's, that's been a battle, um, certainly. And man, God's just been so good. He's been so patient with me. I think that's, that's a huge word. He's just been so mm. patient because. They, I was on fire, certainly, and I still am. And every time I'm in this room, I'm on fire, man. <laughs> but um, I'm still like, I'm still trying to f- find ways to grow deeper with him. That's like, um, you know, my dad texted me the other day. He said, how, "What are three ways I can pray for you?" And one of them was like, "How can I grow deep? Like, I want to grow deeper with the Lord, but I, I want to act out what God's putting on my heart to grow deeper because, like, He's actually putting stuff on my heart. He's giving me ways. He's giving me paths to grow deeper." And sometimes I choose the easy way out and that's not, it's going in the opposite direction. It's just like being comfortable. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, that, I think that's kind of been the tough part. There's so many tough parts about totally. it. Like, it's not like life gets all easier and, and like right. things will hit you. The enemy hits you harder and that's been evident in my life for sure. But um, I think ultimately it's been the peace that he's provided and uh the platform he's given us here has been huge as well. So, yeah, I mean, that's crazy, man. Um, yeah, I, you know, there's there's feelings of like, it's not the craziest testimony you've ever heard, but there, there's so much that it's so obvious to me that God had his, you know, he was writing that story the whole time, man. He was clearly the author of my story, and I, mm-hmm. I just want to make it clear to you guys that he's the author of yours as well, even if you don't know him right now. Like just comprehend that for a second. Like, mm. even even though you don't know him right now, you might not even believe in him. I'm just telling you right now. I can like guarantee you he's writing your story. So whether you want to find out what he's writing, whether you want to you know meet the author now or later, I guess I'll leave that up to you. But I would I would tell you that you should meet him as soon as possible. Yeah. And all you have to do is ask. You just got to say, Lord, just present yourself to me. Like how like show me something like talk to me and don't just ask him once and if you don't hear from him run away like make it consistent and uh, I promise you you'll see the fruits Um, that's what's beautiful about testimonies man like just being able to look back to see Mm -hmm. what he's done um, man it's cool we're just lucky yeah yeah and like just hearing you say all that that's one of the, the themes that I'm at least taking away from your testimony like Sometimes we have to look back in order to grow and in, in order to move forward. And I think that like even like currently all the stuff that we've been having conversations with outside the podcast and even when we talk about freshman year or the way that we were brought up, you know, like we look back on it and we don't dwell on it anymore. We look back on it and we're like, that's what God was teaching me back then. You know, like I can't go back and change it. But now I don't have a feeling of wanting to go back and change it. Like, no, God led me there and he's still walking with me each and every way. Like sometimes he presents different opportunities and hardships to teach us more than we would if we were to do something on our own. And I, that's just the biggest thing I'm taking away from you. Like you're, you're, you're doing a good job of recognizing like your past and where you're going. But like, that's the whole thing, man. We're going to be learning yeah. until the day that we leave this earth. Yeah. Like there's going to be so many things that we learn and sanctification is a lifelong process not overnight yeah and we talk about progress isn't 
linear. It's like up and down. But sometimes you got to go really far down in order to get back where you need to go. Like it, yeah. it's crazy God's goodness and his His providence in our life. Like it, it is mind boggling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And like, it's cool because, you know, we bring up the past and testimonies, right? And like, there can be shame, there can be guilt that you may mm-hmm. feel and that the enemy's trying to work with you on of like, like, look, you still were this person. You still, you may not be them now, but you were, you know, but it's an empty fight for him because you're not that person anymore. Like we are not the people we were freshman year because we, we weren't alive spiritually. Like that's just the truth of it, right? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. and now with being born again, like we are, are not the same people. Like we may have the same bodies, but we aren't the same people. Yeah. And like, it's like when the enemy attacks our past, it's like he's robbing an empty grave. Like there's nothing in there because we're not, we're not there anymore. Like that's not who we, who we are. And, uh, by God's grace, that's not where we're going. Right. We're going, mm-hmm. we're going to something new. And, uh, I want to clear up one thing too, as far as like, if anybody watching, man, maybe is feeling like I'm not ready to change or I can't change enough to come to the feet of Christ. Like, you don't need to. You don't need to change yourself. Mm-hmm. That's that's what we try to do. That's Come what on. testimonies are about, right? We're trying to change ourselves. We're, we we go to all different avenues, different things. But what changes us is not that we had a mag- magical thing that happened. Like, it's the Lord who changes us. And simply, our testimonies are just sharing when we came to the Lord and how he changed us. And yeah. we're seeing that now forever through sanctification. Like, we're going to see mm-hmm. that every day and who we were two years ago is going to be different than where we are five years from now and even today. Right. So totally. um, I would just encourage anybody, man, who's on the edge and have heard maybe all three of ours, maybe just one of ours, our testimonies, like, man, it, it's time. It's time. It, like the Lord's calling you. And like, this is the time to do it. There's no better time than the present just to surrender your life to Christ. Because here's three guys talking about, we wish we would have done it sooner. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. So, well, um, I was just going to say this maybe last thing here, like for me at least, is that there are so many people that have been a part of my walk, whether it was in grade school, in high school, in college. Um, I just want you guys to know that, like, I'm so grateful for the whatever encounters we had, whether mm-hmm. it was negative, whether I didn't treat you the way I should have. Um, I'm First off, I'm sorry if that was the case, like, and I hope that you are understanding that I am a different person now. Um, and I hope that you can just take something away from that, that if there is any, like, if, if there's any anger towards me, um, let me know, man. Like I'm, I'm willing to talk about it. Like I, I don't want that bad blood to be there, but if you don't want to just know that I am a different person and hopefully you have peace with that now. Um, and you know, I also want the people that I hope there's people from back home for me that are watching this still, if you guys are still tuning in, like, thank you, but, um, reach out to me, man. Like I, I want to talk about God with you. If if that's on your heart or if something's stirring in your heart now, like I want to talk about it with you mm-hmm. and I'm here for you. Um, I know I seemed like I was that guy in high school and I, I, hope, I know I spoke to some people about it and I probably helped people out in, in different ways, but like I can completely tell you with like certainty that God's flowing inside of my heart right now and that he will give me the words to say that, that you may need to hear. Mm-hmm. So just let me know. Um, I'm here for you. Uh, even if we haven't talked in years, like, let's do this. Like, there's no better time than now. Um, and ultimately, like, I think over this, like, in this walk, like this real walk with the Lord, I think the the big word has been wisdom. And like, that's still like a, like a constant walk for me is like, I just need to continue to gather wisdom to, so I can be that disciple for others. Mm. Um, I think of a verse proverbs eight eleven for wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her like man like lord just give me wisdom like and I, through experiences he's given us wisdom through conversations he's given us wisdom even when you or david may come to me just saying i need wisdom god's putting the wisdom on my heart and giving it to you it's not me yeah, and yeah, he's giving right. me that wisdom too it's right. just it's so rewarding it's like it's just the greatest thing that you know we can be called to do and um, I think this, the next, you know, steps and the next years of my life, I guess the rest of my life on this earth, I'm just going to be like, 
begging for wisdom, man. Lord, can you just give me a better understanding of who you are? I know we're never going to be fully capable, capable to understand who he is until we see him face to face. Um, but just like continue to grow in me through, through providing me wisdom. Um, that's a big thing. And just letting go, right? Just letting let go. go. Yeah. Letting go. Well, as we're wrapping it up here, what's next, Dorman? I know we've had conversations, all of us, about we know we know our future is in Christ's hand. Yeah. But where do you see yourself going? That could be next week. That could be a few <laughs> yeah. months from now. That could be a few years. Like take it however you want. But what do you what do you think on your heart right now? Um, spiritually, it's just being ready to answer the call. Like God is. Um, He's been speaking to me. Like, I know it. Like, there have been moments where I've been able to step up and, like, just be like, man, this feels uncomfortable to say this to this person right now, but I know I should. And when I say it, I feel so darn good, man, because I, because every time that person's like, I need to hear that, or, like, mm. that's crazy. I was just thinking about that the other day. Like, I just want to continue to be the guy that will answer the call when the Lord brings it to me, and I, I just want to get to a place spiritually where I can not hear him clearly. Um, so spiritually like that's that's a huge goal of mine um and you know i don't i don't know exactly what life's gonna look like here in two months we graduate um i'm hoping i'm gonna be here in phoenix you know i hopefully i'll have a job and um it's weird and i probably haven't applied for enough jobs sorry mom and dad like i just have this piece that something's gonna come my way and i you know maybe i'll be wrong and either way it's gonna be the right thing but i just i have given that to the lord and it, I, I have anxiety some days and I think about it a little bit, but it's nothing serious. Like I, I really have given this aspect, to the, I guess, of the future to the Lord. I just know what he's done for me in the past. I know he's gotten me to the place I need to be, and I know he's going to continue to do that. So I don't know what it's going to look like. I hopefully will be uh, still involved in the sports world. I, I love that. But I know that, the God, that God's going to be a big part of it too, and that I'm going to bring him with me wherever I go. Amen. Yeah, I mean, hey, with the podcast moving forward too, like, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff potentially coming up. Thirty episodes now. Congrats, guys! Like, yeah, that's huge. And I'm, I'm I want to say to both of you, especially you, Dorman, right now on this this episode, like, I'm just so proud of proud of you. Like, thanks, man. That Likewise. was so well well done. Yeah, like, Appreciate and it. um, man, like, I'm just, it's just this has just been such a blessing. Like, thirty episodes, y'all. Like, that's what I was. <laughs> you mean. believe We're blessed, it? aren't we? Like. And I, every time I've come in here, on I've come in here on good days, on bad days, and man, it just makes my personal day better being in here and talking about our beliefs and who God is and how big He is. Like, it it, it just blows my mind every time. And then we go back out into the real world and just gives the extra confidence that man, no matter what happens, God's with us. God is for us and He's with us. And so excited to see what the future looks like. Proud of you too, Harper. I mean, like, all, these are all special episodes, 10, Absolutely. 20, 30, like, yep. sharing these these testimonies. And there's battles that we, you know, we face through it. And, like, man, there's just so much learning and so much excitement to things to come. So y'all stay tuned. Absolutely. I would say, like, last thing is, like, we have learned just as much as, as maybe viewers have or yeah. as the guests that come on here. Like, Absolutely. E- each episode is just, like, God speaking through these guests or God speaking through uh, the three of us. And mm-hmm. man, like this, this podcast has kept me grounded in my faith. Like certainly it's been, yeah. a, it's here for a reason, man. And I, I don't know how long it'll last, but I, I know that it's going to impact me forever. And it's, mm-hmm. it can be awesome to always look back on at, at some point when, you know, realistically it ends at some point, maybe not. <laughs> you never know, man. <laughs> the rest of uh, our life. <laughs> all I know is like, I have a passion to keep it going. And that, yeah. um, if, if you maybe you don't have a podcast at home. Like maybe you're not like going to be able to set it up and do this. Like you don't have to like That's right. nope. just have conversations and like find a mentor and find people and things are going to start working out. Yeah. Well, boys, I'm proud of y'all. Proud of you, man. Proud of you. Congrats. This is awesome. Yeah. Episode 30. Cool moment. Yep. Y'all you've now heard and seen all three of our testimonies. Yeah. They're all about us, but at the end of the day, they're all pointing to him. Yep. And so we appreciate the support. We got a lot of fun stuff coming along. We're going to be doing some new stuff. Let's just say that. But we love y'all. We'll see you next time.